Greek, ka, ha, cha, and hya. The first two sounds that we're looking at are velars. There's the velar stop, ka, and the velar fricative, ha. And the next two are palatals, the palatal stop, kya, and the palatal fricative, hya. So the first question we want to ask is whether our stops are in complementary distribution with the fricatives or in contrastive distribution. Well, we find that they are overlapping and that we find minimal pairs between ka and ha. So it's a minimal pair because they only differ in those two sounds, kano versus hano, and they mean different things. So we have a minimal pair. That means that they are allophones of different phonemes. So ka and ha, different phonemes. Now we look at cha and sha, and we see the sha in shino and the cha in kino. Again, a minimal pair. They mean different things. Therefore, they are allophones of different phonemes. And we find actually quite a few minimal pairs in this set of data. So we can be abundantly clear that the stops and the fricatives are allophones of different phonemes. Now the question is whether the velars and the palatals are allophones of different phonemes or if there's some sort of complementary distribution that explains when we get a stop, or sorry, when we get a velar and when we get a palatal. Okay, so what we want to do is look at the environments. And I'm going to start by looking at what follows. So we see that K and H are two velars, can precede an A, and we see the palatals preceding an E. We also see the palatals preceding an A. We see the velars preceding O. We see the velars preceding consonants as well, that ra. We see the, uh, the velars preceding an u, and again, we see e down here with the palatals. Now, what we're seeing is the velars have the wider distribution. They don't always precede a vowel, which suggests to us that that must be the underlying representation. That's the elsewhere case. So now we want to look at the environment immediately following the palatals and see if there's something about that environment. And what we see is, for example, E and A, that those vowels are front vowels, whereas all of these vowels, A and Let's see, U, those two vowels, uh, U, those are back vowels. And then, of course, we've got the consonants here, which tells us that those velars, again, are the underlying representation, and the palatals are the derived one. In other words, that's the result of a rule. Okay, so to summarize what we're concluding here, the Palatals come about only when the sounds precede a front vowel. All right, so what we can see is, first of all, k and h are an overlapping distribution, and they are contrasted because of the minimal pairs. Ch and sh are also an overlapping distribution and contrastive because of minimal pairs. The first pair of phones are in complementary distribution with the second pair of phones. In other words, the velars are in complementary distribution with the palatals. Thus, it is reasonable to think that the two stops are allophones of the same phoneme, and the two fricatives are allophones of the same phoneme. That then leads us to the, these rules here. The k becomes k when it precedes a front vowel and a k elsewhere, and the h becomes sh when it precedes a front vowel and it is ch elsewhere, or to generalize, 
we say that a velar obstruent, so in other words, a velar stop or a velar fricative, becomes a palatal when it precedes a front vowel, and a velar obstruent is velar elsewhere. So now we've got our rules of the distribution, and we've got our natural class velar obstruents. Obstruents, remember, are all of those um, all of those consonants that are not sonorants. And then palatal is a place of articulation. So now we're saying that that's what is targeted in these as velar becomes palatal in this special environment. It is an assimilation of sorts that front vowels draw the tongue further forward and palatals are further forward than velars.